Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and today I'm cooking on the lighter side, but my two boys, Jamie and Bobby, are gonna help me out. And the first thing I'm gonna be making is poppy seed pinwheels with a light cream cheese center. They're almost too cute to eat. And then I'm gonna be fixing up a vegetable crudite with a nice light dip. After that, the boys are gonna be bringing me home a freshly caught fish from my can't miss red snapper, a dish that's so simple and so delicious you won't believe it. And then for dessert, Jamie and Bobby are gonna be helping me prepare an almost fat-free lemon cheesecake. It's so rich and creamy you'll never know it's not the real thing. So get ready, y'all, because today we're taking a walk on the lighter side. Bobby, this is like a good spot. I'm gonna start right here, okay? That's it, man, right, right. there. Keep me here now. That's it. Right, don't mess this up now. Mama's expecting fish for dinner. I'm gonna get it. You got it. You got it. Oh, man. Oh. Mama's gonna be mad. A rope. This is where you caught fish last time. I think it's the wrong guy doing the fishing, to tell you the truth. While they're fishing, let's get started. Today, I'm gonna start off by making poppy seed pinwheels. I've got a light softened cream cheese here. I'm gonna add some dry parsley and some dried chives and a half a teaspoon of garlic salt. And we're just gonna mix that together. Crescent rolls are a fabulous thing. There's so many good hors d'oeuvres that you can make using these wonderful, delicate crescent rolls. All right, so we're just gonna open these up, and I hope it doesn't pop and scare me. They, they get me every time. There we go. All right. Now all I'm gonna do is open them up and kind of roll them out. Press that into a nice rectangle. So we're just gonna take this light cream cheese center and we're gonna put it onto our pastry. I'm just gonna do it part of the way because when I roll it, I don't want it to squeeze all out. All right, we're just gonna roll that up. You wanna put a little flour on your board to help me be able to roll it. See how quick and easy that was. Now we're gonna spray our pan with Pam. All right, here we go. Lightly, because we're cooking lighter. I'm just gonna move that to our pan. All right now we're gonna take our egg beaters and I'm gonna brush a light coating over the top of our pastry. Now we're just gonna dust the top of it with some poppy seed. All right, so all we have to do now is score our pinwheels. And I'm gonna just put a little flour here and so I'll have to run my knife through. And we're gonna cut not all the way through the pinwheel, but just through the pastry. When I'm cutting soft things, I always like to use a serrated edge. All right, now we're gonna put this in a 375 degree preheated oven. And in the meantime, we're gonna move down here and make our dip. And we're gonna bake it for about 10 minutes. All right, now we're gonna make a light dip for our fresh vegetable crudités. And I'm gonna take light cream cheese. I'm using a light mayonnaise. And I'm using a light sour cream. Now I'm just gonna blend these together. Now at this point, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of vinegar and one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice in there. Okay, here we go. All right, that's mixed up pretty good. I think it needs a little salt. And I think I'm even gonna put a little pepper in it to give it a little kick because sometimes when you use light products, they fall short on flavor. Now at this point, I'm gonna be adding a half a cup of Roquefort cheese. All right, now I think out of all the strong cheeses that Roquefort's my favorite, I just love it. And I like the clumps in it. 
So like I said, when I dip my vegetables in there, I'll get a chunk of Roquefort. All right, that takes care of our dip, or our vegetable crudités. But right now, I'm smelling these pinwheels, and I think we need to check on them. Ooh. Oh gosh, they look delicious. Mmm. That looks really, really good. And nobody will ever guess that I put a light center in it. Mmm. That looks so good. But you know, I think that next one maybe has more filling in it. So I'll leave that for the boys and I'll come in here and get me a centerpiece. Yeah, now we talking. <laughs> That's the piece I want. Looks delicious. Mm-mm-mm. Gosh, those are good. When we come back, I'm hoping that we're gonna cook some red snapper if those boys come back. Hope the fish are biting. I'll see y'all soon. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, you got it. You got it. Oh. We've been out here an hour. We've caught a tree limb, a rope, and a sunburn. Let's go to the market. Beautiful day to do it. You can't fish. Of the market. Nice job, brother. If Mama finds out that you didn't catch she'll nothing, never find out. You know how happy she'll be when we get there with the fish cleaned already? Easiest fishing we've ever done. Yeah. Hey, Jason. Hey. What's happening, man? We need a snapper on the fly. Mom's waiting on us. We didn't catch anything today. Good. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that, that one right there looks good. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. Is it okay to you guys? Um, we're going straight to Mom's. Do you mind filleting it for us? Sure, no problem. Be right back. Right. Thanks. And just like that, we're back in good standing. All right, fellas, you're good to go. Awesome. Jason? Thanks, Jason. You are all I've been on our business account for us. Yes, sir. Thanks, brother. We'll see you next time. Hopefully the boys have had some good luck fishing. I hope, because they don't come in soon. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do about the fish. But anyway, while we're waiting on them, we'll move on to our vegetable crudités. All we have to do is add our dip. It's had a chance for the flavors to blend and the lemon juice in it gives it a wonderful little bite. Hey, Mom. Oh, there's my fisherman. Yep. I was about to think I was gonna have to go to the store. Hey, son. No, that's our best no, day fishing ever. No, you don't have to go to the store. Really? Yeah, what you cook? Well, I've just got a vegetable crudite mm. for us. So, what did y'all catch? Right, beautiful snapper. The most beautiful you snapper. You did? Mm -hmm. Wonderful, yeah. well, I was about to get worried about y'all. Looks almost like a uh, fish shop did it, doesn't it, Mom? They already filleted. Yeah. I did it on the way over, nice, isn't it huh? beautiful? You are the sweetest boy. You're always thinking about your mama. I love you. I didn't want you to have to do it. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Listen, you guys go wash up, but y'all don't go too far because I'm fixing to make a cheesecake and I'm going to need y'all's help, okay? Cheesecake. Okay. I'm not yeah. going far. Well, I'm not so sure about this fish. Well, it does smell like it's good and fresh, so maybe they really did go fishing. All right, I'm gonna take a little salt and a little pepper, and I'm gonna do very little to this fish. <laughs> this is the recipe of an ex-sister-in-law, and I think she calls it can't miss fish. So you can use any kind of fish, but I'm using red snappers. I'm just gonna put a little pepper on each side of it. And then I'm gonna come over here, and I wanna salt both sides. I'm gonna give it a rub. All right, now in our dish, I'm gonna layer bell peppers, 
and onions. And this is almost gonna act like a rack for our fish. That looks great. Now we're just gonna lay our fish on top like that. And I'm gonna dot it with a little butter. And if you want to use a light butter on this, you can. But I have to tell you, I love buttering fish. Okay, this is ready to go in the oven. All I'm gonna do now is sprinkle it before I put it in with just a little Worcestershire sauce. All right, so we're gonna run this in for about 12 minutes into that preheated 350 degree oven. We're gonna let that cook until it's almost done and then we're gonna sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese and run it under the broiler until that's melted. All right, the timer just went off, so let's take a look at our fish. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. I can smell the peppers and the onions. And I'm gonna just switch this oven to broil, turn up that heat. I'm just gonna sprinkle it with the Parmesan cheese. And I think I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little red bell pepper. All right, so we're gonna run this back in the oven and we'll wanna keep a close eye on it, so. Into the broiler that goes for a couple of minutes. But this fish is smelling delicious. All right, let's check this fish, because should be ready. Oh, and it is. Look how bubbly. Found my spatula again. Smells so flavorful. Ooh. Looks delicious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull me off a little bite. And see what it tastes like. That's really, really good. We're gonna come back and complete our light meal by making Joanne's almost fat-free lemon cheesecake. So y'all stick around, I really think you're gonna like it. Anytime you need help with the TV show, Mom, just let us know. Well, how about right now? Come on, come on, y'all get your butts up. Work for your supper, come on. <sighs> What you got? I got lemons and Been to the lemon tree? Yes. What are we gonna do? We're gonna make Joanne's almost fat-free lemon cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Bobby, why don't you do the crust, son? All right. And Jamie can do the filling. Now you're gonna start out, you're gonna need right at two cups of fat-free vanilla wafer crumbs. Got them ready to go. So when you get them mashed up, then do the butter. All right. All right, Jamie, for okay, you. Mom. Cheesecake is, yeah, so simple. You've got three eight ounce packages of cream. blend all this together? Blend it all Time together. Time to go. This is the first cheesecake I've Time ever made. Time to go. Now you're using a, a fat free cream cheese and it's gonna work nicely. So just beat that until it's fluffy. All right, toss in your sour cream. That's fat free sour cream. Great, just, all right, now throw in your Splenda and that's, about two cups of Splenda you got. Splenda is one of those sugar substitutes that you can actually bake with. All right, now add your eggs slowly, and your egg beaters don't have any fat or cholesterol in them. Okay, now you can add your second egg. All right, that looks great, son. Now you're gonna need just a tablespoon of lemon juice. All right, now you'll need about a teaspoon of zest, and you're done. That was easy. I know it, cheesecakes are easy, easy, easy to make. That looks perfect. Now I'll show you something about your mixer, son. Okay, mm -hmm. leave it on low. And I'm, now you tilt it out. All right. And that cleans your beaters off. Okay. I've seen you do that on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have. All right, there you go. Okay, son, you've got your. I've pounded the vanilla wafers okay. into submission. Okay. And I'm adding about a quarter cup of, of butter to them and uh, getting ready to put them in the pan here as our base. Just pour that into your, mm-hmm. Just dump it all in. All right, and 
Press that down very firmly. You want to move it over here to a steadier surface and let it come up about an inch and a half. So when we take our cheesecake out, you can see some of that pretty crust. You get this in the oven real quick, like, okay? 350 for uh, about actually eight to 325. 10 minutes. And we're going to let that bake for about eight to 10 minutes. And then we're going to pull it out and we're going to pour in this delicious cheesecake batter that Jamie's mixed up. All right, Bobby, I've got another crust that's already cooled over there. So if you'll bring that in, because right I'm really making two of these today. I'm... All right, son, you just pour that in on your just crust. Just straight in, okay. Just straight in. See what a pretty batter you've got. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mom. All right, dog baby, put that in the oven. We're going to let it bake at 325 for 60, 75 minutes, something like that. Oh, so a long just time. gently put that in your oven. Okay. And Bobby, if you'd be getting out the one that I've already got cool. As usual, I'm a step ahead of you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there you go, son. Isn't that a nice surprise? Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> all right, now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dust our plate just cause that kinda makes it pretty with a little powdered sugar. Okay, now all you have to do is pour your lemon curd into the center and just bring it to the edge. Okay. If it drips down a little, don't worry. Yeah, I made this curd earlier so it could be nice and chilled, mm -hmm. but you can buy lemon curd in a jar at some of your better stores, and you may can even find it in the grocery store, but that looks delicious. All right, Bobby, look over there on that counter and see if you don't see something that looks like a, that's it. Now, how do y'all like this little trick? That's a pie cheater. Yes. All you have to do. do you mark it or cut with it? You mark it. That's it. Just press it down and mark with it. Hmm. And that shows you just what the perfect cheesecake size. Mm -hmm. Ingenious. Yes. You want to cut the cake, Mom? You cheated it, but you didn't cut it. Oh, no, I'm fixing to cut us a piece. But I do want some garnish. Looks delicious. It's as good as it looks. All right, you've got us three forks ready. I got them. I hear Bobby swallowing hard. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Pass me a fork. Give me a fork. Would y'all like some? <laughs> <laughs> I do want some. Mm-hmm. That's a fine cheesecake. Mm-hmm. It doesn't taste light at all. This is out of this world, y'all. It's going to be wonderful with the fish. Mm. Well, we really Delicious. have to thank Joanne Poff. Your recipe is over the top, girl. Mm, thank you, Joanne. It's delicious. Y'all stick around because I'm going to show you how to lighten up the oils and butters in your life so y'all don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about butters and fats and olive oils. Let's start over here with the butter. This one is a whipped butter. You'd never want to use this for bacon. You would want to stick to one of your stick butters. We've got an unsalted butter here, which the professional chefs really prefer this. In the center, I've got a salted butter, which I'm from the South, so I use this even for my bacon. They prefer not to because they don't want any added salts. Now, this one is a substitute. You wouldn't want to do any bacon with a substitute unless the recipe called for it because it could mess you up. And over here, we have our different oils. The lighter your oil is, the better it is for frying. And you all know probably that I do fry my chicken in peanut oil. And if you really want to jazz up your oils, it's so easy to do that using fresh herbs. Now I've taken oil and I've just put fresh rosemary in there. And this is wonderful for your, your breads. It's delicious. I can't believe that our time's up already today. It was fun, though. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? You won't see me cooking light very, very often, but I hope that you've enjoyed today's show. And I really want to thank you boys for catching that fish for your mama it today. It was a, it's a hard fight, too. Well, they tried to act like they weren't going to bite, but we got Good. them. And you look lighter already. You do. I do look yeah. lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, America, best dishes from my light meal to yours. Let's go get us some fried chicken. Y'all want to? Yeah, let's go.